So Adam was the one who was on the other side of my NAS trade, because I've been getting smoked being long <laughs> on the NASDAQ. This is the guy who was shorting it. Uh, person number nine, nine trades, six positive, three negative, and person number, what am I doing? Clearly he likes trading Euro dollar. I'm curious what shirt Josh is wearing today. Let's find out. Are you about to go through every trade that you took? Bishop GPT. You made this, Matt? That is very cool. That um, is so cool. I need that guy's phone number. Last video, sad face. One last thing that needs to be cleared up. I have one more question and that's for, for Josh. Uh, he, he wants to share his side of the story when it comes to his, uh, his lucky trading t-shirt. <laughs> so Josh, what was the deal with that? All right, guys, so here I am with Josh, MJ, and Usi, three members of the trading competition. We're hopping on a call for the final week so that we can get some of their thoughts about what they've uh, really liked about the competition so far, maybe what's been challenging. But yeah, it's going to be really fun to get to hear from these three guys who have been performing really well in the competition. So Josh, why don't I start with you? Um, why don't you kind of give us a little bit more background? Uh, I know that you're the youngest person in the competition, only 19 years old, right? Um, mm -hmm. And you live in the UK. So why don't you tell us just a little bit more about yourself and then also how you've been enjoying the competition so far? Um, all right. So I, I got into trading when I was 15 from like, I was watching a video to do nothing with trading and someone mentioned, mentioned like, Oh, you know, the Forex traders driving around in a Lamborghini. And I was like, oh, I don't know what that is. And then I kind of fell into that trap to begin with, which was a little bit unfortunate. Um, and I had, it was kind of good luck, but also bad luck. Um, but I went to get funding for like a funding firm and I wasn't profitable or anything like that. Uh, but I got really lucky and managed to make money. And then from there, I kind of went downhill because I didn't know what I was doing, but I had that initial like, and and because I was so young as well, I was, it was like way more than I'd ever made in my life. So it was a bit of a shock to the system. And then once I lost everything, like you inevitably do, I decided to take a step back and rethink everything. And now I've come and, uh, back into the market. It's taken more of a longer term approach, but I think after this challenge, I might have to become a day trader or something. Oh, really? <laughs> so that's um, interesting. I'm only joking. So, so you you uh, took a funded challenge um, mm -hmm. after how how long after you started kind of you know getting into trading did you take that funded challenge? Want to stay up to date with all the latest trading information? In the description below, you'll find the link to join our free Discord. The Discord gives you instant access to lots of helpful material like free trading courses, chart analysis, updates about what's happening in the A1 community, as well as discount codes for our other products and services. The best part, all of this and more is 100% free. So go down in the description below this video and check it out for yourself. If you're interested in upgrading to the full VI IP Discord featuring our team of expert traders signals, you can use the live chat link in the description to get connected with one of our team members in seconds. So don't wait, go check out the free Discord today. I've been trading on like a, a demo account since I was like 17, but it's like if I'd go into a losing streak, I would just risk more and then wait till I get back to break even and be like, oh yeah, when I have a live account, I won't do that, I'll be fine. <laughs> But, yeah, no, the habits that you make on your demo account are definitely going to translate over. But I, I was guilty of that, too, um, with, during during our, our office trading competition. I, I can remember uh, mm -hmm. having having a bad trade and then just, you know, the feeling of like wanting to get that back immediately. So you, you just want to you want to risk more. Um, but you got funded on your first try just because of you said luck. Yeah, I, I essentially uh, went all in and like passed the first day straight away. And then the second the stage. The first day? Yeah. And oh then the same God. with the second stage. And then I got my like live funded account and I, I entered it into like a basically risking my whole account. And I managed to make like 20 grand like within my first week. And then I withdrew it all. And then it slowly just 
dwindled down from there. And then I was like, well, I've done it once. I can do it again. Brought another challenge. And that one didn't go as well. I did that for like a few months. And then I realised that I can't keep doing this because it isn't, it's not going to end well. So about August or September uh, last year, I decided to take a step back and go a little bit slower. And uh, yeah, it's been great ever since. You you live and you learn in the markets. You know, um, it's cool that you were able to get off to a hot start like that. But it seems like, you know, uh, you've you've had a little bit of fun in the markets. You mm-hmm. you, you understand them much more uh, clearly um, after after going through some things. And you're you're on your way to be to, to becoming a uh, you you already are a a very a a, a very smart and very successful trader but you're Thank continuing you. to learn um you know that some things maybe just take take a little more time and maybe we shouldn't go all in mm-hmm. on the first day of the funded challenge but uh no that's, that's really why. cool to hear um mj how about you why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself absolutely um so i have been trading the financial markets for five years within the five years also came the failure. Um, So I was working for a business process outsourcing companies. I've been working for like 18 years of my life. Uh, And I kind of got tired of it. Like I'm, I'm on a leadership position and it's really stressful. So I thought I wanted to be financially free. And then I saw this ad campaign of a school coming from Greg Secker, uh, learn to trade. That's, that's kind of a school that they built here in the Philippines and they enrolled uh, and I said, I'm about to retire. I'm retiring early. That's like, man. So I got all my savings from my 18 years of working funded on my Forex account. And long story short, gold got me. Uh, I thought I was... Because, I mean, it was giving me really nice profits in, like, the first three days right after I opened my live account. I was, like, I was earning, like, uh, $3,000, $4,000 a day uh, from it. And I was, like, wow, this is, this is well so easy. I was, like, let's just do it, man. I mean, I, I got it all figured out. I mean, how could no nobody in social media got so popular because of doing this? It's so easy. Until one time. Um, I, I hit a trade on gold and I went out to a convenience store to buy something. By the time I came back, uh, I didn't realize there was news at that time. So it blew <laughs> up everything. Like it, I, I had to be clinically diagnosed of depression because of what happened on that account. Like the bar, the bar, the bar was so big. It blew everything in my account. So uh, I had to recover um, emotionally and financially until, you know, when things got back on my feet, um, I had to go back to working and then things, you know, I, I had to learn things slowly. Uh, and then at the end of that stretch, um, as far as understanding uh, price charts, price patterns, support and resistance zones, etc., cetera, um, trading psychology became my pet feed. Uh, became so like it's mind blowing. It's really hard to put into practice. Um, it's easy conceptually, but it's so hard to put it in practice. Like your fear of even if you know you have a really good strategy, back tested it with good results, you still have that fear, and you have to be very self conscious that. Are you feeling that fear of entering the markets? And once you're in, now there's greed if you're seeing that you're being in profits. Um, and I got to say, and this is true, I'm not making this up. Uh, when I started going back and, and trying to climb back on my feet, uh, Nick was a very detrimental part of that climb. Um, so I've been watching. I've been a subscriber of Nick in his YouTube for for more over four years now. And, and he has been a very detrimental part of that uh, journey. Uh, so I got, you know, props to Nick, you know, 
um, and and that basically it. And and right now I'm still working, but I'm working as a finance manager now. I'm outside the business outsourcing process industry. Um, I basically fix finances for my my employer along with his investments and, and all that stuff. So I get the shot to kind of incorporate trading uh, on the Forex markets uh, along with the job that I do. So yeah, so that's... far so good. That's really cool. Um, you you and Josh uh, both have kind of similar stories in the sense that uh, you got into it and you got off to a really hot start and yeah. you had to, um, you know, in a sense, be humbled a little bit and kind of have that, uh, you know, come back down to earth type of uh, experience where, you know, maybe this isn't quite as easy as I initially thought it was, um, you know, a lot of success uh, really quickly and still, you know, sustained success to this day. I know that both of you um, are, are, are great traders uh, and, and uh, can really hold your own in the markets, but, you know, it takes a lot of, of time. I'm, you know, I'm kind of in the middle of that as someone who has uh, basically kind of been dabbling with all this stuff for the past couple of months. Um, I would consider myself to be, you know, a very new rookie trader who's trying to uh, figure out a lot of this stuff for himself uh, as well. So, you know, obviously you guys are much past me. You guys are much more successful. And, uh, but um, no, and I, and I hate hearing uh, that, that story of, of how you could leave and go to the store and everything is great. And by the time you come back, uh, you know, you've, you've blown your account. That, that is, um, you know, <laughs> That's a, That's a, a very, a, and, a, and on one trade to gold, the news, um, you know, I'm sorry that that happened to you, but I think, I hope at least that that experience put you in a, uh, a position in a mindset to be more uh, successful in the future. The lessons that you learned from uh, that mistake uh, have, have set you, have given you a foundation to hopefully be, uh, more cautious and more successful, uh, in the future, because trading can be, you know, dangerous when you're, you're using your, your own, uh, money to, you know, build, you know, more capital, more gain, more profits, but also potentially, you know, you could lose a lot of your income, your money in, uh, you know, a matter of moments. And so it can be a scary thing. And I think that you have to be yeah. incredibly strong willed and, and tough, uh, you know, to to perform well in a market like this. So being able to see uh, not only you, MJ, but Josh, you as well, kind of learn from those lessons and bounce back and become better uh, you know, traders because of the mistakes that you made early on in your trading career, I think shows the mental toughness, uh, that you guys have in order to be successful in a world like this. So, um, That's very, right. very cool. And it's also very, very cool to, to hear that you've been, um, subscribed to Nick for so long. You, you've really gotten to see him, uh, uh, grow into, yeah, you know, trader Nick on YouTube to, not just Trader Nick, but also A1 Trading, the uh, the company that it is now. So that's very cool that's to hear. Right. Usi, right. you've been down there waiting very patiently. Um, we've saved the best for last. <laughs> Usi, why don't you tell us a little bit more about uh, about yourself? Yeah, um, definitely. So um, my name is Usi. Actually, in in full, it's Ustandile which is a pretty South African native name. Um, so basically I'm South Africa, you know, trading for almost four years now because I started trading actually 2020, even though I was exposed to the markets 2019. So 2019, I was still in high school. Um, 
I was still doing my, my, my we call it the side grade 12, um, which is basically your last grade of high school. And um, I was doing that and this other guy just came to me and was like, yeah, I mean, just, you should, you should actually try out trading. There's this thing called Forex. People are making money, people are making millions. Um, I was very skeptic at first and I took my time, you know, actually getting it, getting into it. As a result, I remember when I actually started trading, I started on a demo account and I was doing it as a, I was kind of doing it as a game. Like I was, I was literally trading for fun, you know, just opening trades, seeing them make money, closing the trades and just doing that over and over again. Um, up until I got bored and I deleted the MP5 app on my phone and just let it go. And then 2020 um, was the full introduction because the person who is, or rather who introduced me to trading, he's been trading for almost 20 years and he told me to, you know, get into it, all those kinds of stuff. And yeah, um, long story short, got into it exactly on my first month of trading. Because I was under his mentorship, I was able to make some money, withdraw a hundred dollars from the market. And I, 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 I really saw that as a, I don't know, like a miracle, you know, making money from nothing technically, you know, so, so I was really, really impressed. And not only was I impressed, I started becoming a bit cocky and overconfident told my mentor, nah, I'll do this on my own. And then um, I went on and traded, which really ended badly for me because I ended up blowing or rather like literally making a loss on my account, both the hundred dollars and my money, which I had previously funded personally. And that's when I saw that, okay, no, this is, this is pretty serious and I need to put more time in. Uh, would say that 2020 wasn't really a profitable year besides that we draw um 2021 as well 2022 was when i started um to kind of make money on the market but it was still a very um you know very gentle and you know it, it, i just took my time in learning the markets and all that and then this year early this year i was really having a rough time in the yeah, I, I would say it was one of those times when you were even questioning if this is a thing that you should do, you know. And um, I, I, I bumped into one of Trader Nick's videos. It was a video where I remember very well, I think it was Euro USD live trading. Um, so, so it was one of, those um, one of those videos and it was just showing his live trade of the video. And that's when I actually got my first site of the A1 software. It was early this year, around February, I think. Um, I saw the A1 software and all that. Um, I knew fundamental analysis. I just did not know that it could be that deep and that, um, you know, complicated and even just analytical, if I put it like that. So after that, I, I literally became addicted with his videos. I went and binge, and binge watched all of his videos on YouTube, literally, like, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I watched all of his videos. Um, and I could say that there was a point where many things started to change in my trading because I started to also, um, 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 also just add a bit of fundamental analysis. And from then on, yeah, everything started going my way in, in the, in a very slow, you know, growth manner, but um, I could say that after, you know, being exposed to the channel and everything like that, um, I was really starting to become a good, good trader, which um, I, I would, I mean, I'd like to believe that I kind of am, you know, so yeah, that's my story. I believe you are, Usi. I've, you know, Me too, man. one of the, uh, one of 100%. the fun things about the competition is being able to, uh, kind of take a peek into all of your, uh, trading accounts. And I've actually been very impressed with, with everybody so far. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's cool to see that, uh, a one trading has a, a community of, of strong minded, strong willed, uh, good, good traders to, to back it, including, 
um, you know, not just you guys, but uh, many, many people watching. Um, but Usi, that's that's really interesting to hear because uh, one thing that I've gathered from talking to the three of you is that all three of you had a very similar experience where early on um, you had to be, you know, kind of taught some lessons about the market and and learn to to take your time a little bit more. Uh, Usi, I think it's really cool that you were able to get introduced through a mentor, you know, somebody that could kind of uh, help walk you through uh, the markets because, um, you know, similar to what MJ was saying about the, the trading psychology, trading can just be a very, very tough spot. And, you know, uh, going through a, a significant drawdown period where, um, you know, you are trying, you are genuinely trying your best to, you know, make a profit, but all you're doing is is losing more money, I would imagine is incredibly uh, taxing, you know, can really take a toll on uh, your your psyche and your mental um, uh, emotionally, you know, things like that. So I think, you know, at least in your instance, you were introduced and had a mentor uh, who could help you out. Um, at first, I hope that you still have uh, somebody that you can you can talk to each of you um, about this kind of stuff because uh, yeah, I feel like I've said it ten or twenty times already. But trading can be can be difficult, um, and yeah, so that's it's 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 really cool to hear uh, to learn a little bit more uh, about each of you before we go. Uh, there's just one last thing that needs to be cleared up. I have one more question and that's for, for Josh. Uh, he, he wants to share his side of the story when it comes to his, uh, his lucky trading t-shirt. So Josh, what was the deal with that? I, I have a very boring wardrobe selection and I have the ability to purchase the same top more than once. Uh, so I have six of these white tops and six of them in black. And I think I've got three of them in blue as well. So uh, I just have an amazing ability to accidentally buy the same top over and over. So the mystery has been solved. Yes, can I can confirm that Josh does indeed wash his clothes. He... <laughs> He, oh, maybe well, after that look, maybe not. I hope that you guys enjoyed that intro where I actually got to sit down with Josh, Usi, and MJ at the same time um, and talk to them, uh, get to learn a little bit more about just the, who they are as people, where they came from, uh, and how they uh, uh, have enjoyed the competition so far. But, um, you know, more than anything, I, I just wanted to, to, you know, sit and talk with these guys because for the last three weeks, you know, we've uh, been in, in constant communication with each other, not always uh, face to face, uh, you know, video chats like that, but getting to watch their update videos, talking to them in the discord, um, you know, uh, emails back and forth. They're, everybody in this competition, I can't stress it enough, is, is such a, a, a great uh, and interesting person. Um, I wish that we could have gotten even more people uh, in that call to, uh, to, to talk to even more of them. Um, but again, you know, I, I can't say it enough. Everyone, this whole competition has been great and everyone in the competition is, is great as well. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed it as much as we have. This is the last uh, reaction video to their updates, but the winner is still to be determined. So we still have to sit down with our panel of judges and go over everyone's accounts to determine the overall winner of the competition. That's the twist. We are going to actually judge everyone's trading performances over these past three weeks um, to determine the overall winner. Now, myself, I have been keeping up with everyone's accounts. I've been tracking their account balances, how many trades they've taken, you know, both positive and negative. Uh, you know, it's taking a look at some of their entries and especially, you know, between the, the update videos, hearing their analysis, hearing their thought process, seeing where they're putting uh, stop loss, things like that, if they choose to, uh, to, to use those, um, you know, 
other other indicators and just you know i've been keeping up with everything so now it's our panel of judges turn to go over all of that same information and then come together as a collective to determine the overall winner so that is still to come so be uh make sure that you are on the lookout for that if you've been enjoying the competition but with that let's go ahead and jump into the last bit of our update videos okay so i have a few stats that i'm going to read out for you guys um, I have gone through, and I wasn't initially planning on doing this, but I think this could be fun and interesting. So I have tallied up everyone's total final account balances, um, as well as the number of trades taken, how many of those were positive and how many of those were negative. So I'm not going to share all of the information because um, I don't want to put anybody in a awkward spot. But what I will say is we had a clean split. And, and I mean, in a lot of these videos, you can probably see people's account balances. I mean, Joseph was literally just sharing his. Um, I'm recording this. I think I'm going to put this at the beginning of the video. I'm recording it after I just watched everybody's uh, final videos. Four people finished in profit. Four people finished out of profit. Um, I believe Usi showed his final account balance. Josh showed his, he didn't show his final account balance, but he talked about what percentage profit he made. Uh, Joseph was just showing off his account balance. Um, and the last person, Eric, I'll say Eric, he, they did not submit a video for this week, so we didn't get to see his final uh, trades or anything. Not that he, Eric, Eric took three trades in three weeks, so. <laughs> but he was in profit. He had one really big trade. That's all I'll say. I'm going to run down the number of trades taken by each trader, though. Um, I'm not going to say who took how many trades. I'm going to leave that anonymous. And I'm also going to. But yeah, okay, let's just let's just run through this. So like I said, four people were in profit, four people uh, were were not. But uh, starting off with person number one, they took 12 trades, nine were positive, three were negative. Now again, you may think to yourself, well, nine positive trades, three negative trades, they have to be in profit, right? Profit can be a dollar and a negative trade can be a thousand, you know? Anything is possible when it comes to trading. So just keep that in mind. Uh, person number two, 13 trades. Eight were positive, five were negative. Person number three took... Person number three took 44 trades. Although person number three also took more than 44 trades. And if you were person number three, and you probably know who you are, took closer to like 60 trades actually i think um but that's a different story anyway 44 trades 18 positive 26 negative uh person number five 36 trades 13 positive 23 negative person number six 23 trades one positive 22 negative uh person number four we we already talked or uh, for uh, person number six brain fart. You just said that three trades, one positive, two negative. That was Eric. Eric took three trades. Uh, person number nine, nine trades, six positive, three negative. And person number, what am I doing? Have I completely lost count? I'm looking at so many numbers on my screen right now. I think that I just totally said the wrong whatever. Last person. 39 trades, 20 positive, 19 negative. So do with that information what you will. Um, really good trading competition. Uh, and yeah, I, th I said, I think I'm gonna put this at the beginning of the video. So now let's get into the reaction videos. All right, so here we go. First video, we are going to start off with Matt. Now this is actually Matt's video that he submitted last week on Thursday, I believe. So it was just before or just after, rather, I had finished up and was working on the video. So I was not able to include this in last week's update, 
but we can still get an update on what Matt has been up to, uh, you know, all last week. So let's let's just go ahead and see what Matt has been up to. Hey everyone, I'm going to do a little recap of the trades I took um, since the last update. Um, it's kind of hard for me to catch up from where I left off. I don't remember where I left everybody besides uh, <laughs> attributing that I'm going to be putting some serious risk in this week. And I did. I lost about 10%, um, over 10%. And if you see me looking away from the, the screen, again, I'm looking at my laptop where I have all of this recording because I want to make sure that I don't have that same audio problem that I had last week. I want to make sure that this is recording audio the first time the right way. So um, I am, <laughs> even if I'm not looking, I promise I am still watching. And one single trade because I was over leveraged and I thought I knew what I was doing. Um, but I had to, honestly what it was is I moved my stops and then once I moved my stops once, I was like, I, I'm going to have to basically find a stop level that I'm 100% comfortable with and just leave it there. If it gets stopped out, find my trade. And... I found the trade again, and I stick to my bias. I was bearish EU just because the war and everything. I'm I feel like the dollar's gonna go up with all that stuff, and every, something new is happening every day. So I feel like this war is not gonna die down anytime soon. So Matt is Matt's an interesting one because he primarily, if not only, trades uh, the euro dollar. I I think I remember seeing. A, a few trades on another asset, one or two, but like very, very, very few. Whereas you can see if we just back this up uh, just just a little bit here, um, clearly he likes trading euro dollar. Um, he liked trading euro dollar a lot right then. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's that's always something interesting uh, when when currency traders um, or just traders in general, kind of they they play favorites in a way with the market they just have something that works for them and they just stick with it which is a smart thing to do if it's working for you why you know why why change it but i know um our regular live stream guest marco uh is very similar where marco i believe trades only six currency pairs he will do analysis if you ask him to on pretty much any chart that you know you you ask him to pull up. He'll have an opinion on it, and he can you know look at the the technical analysis of it and the the uh, the, the the market structure and whatnot, and and you know give you a, give you a bias. But he will only trade those specific pairs that he has found to be uh, you know what works for him. Um, I know that Nick even is a little bit similar. Nick trades uh, you know a few currency pairs, uh, mostly indices, gold, silver. Um, and then he also does, uh, you know, a, a few other more technical things, but you will never see, you know, a, a great breakout on Aussie JPY and, um, you know, Nick or Marco or, uh, maybe that's one of Marco's pairs. I, I can't remember them off the top of my head. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, I, I, I find that interesting that when traders find something that works for them, uh, they just stick with it and they refuse to trade anything else, which, which I mean, could be a positive thing. The war's not going to die down anytime soon. So I was bearish EU. Uh, finally caught something over here and hold on, let me pull this up. I um, was able to make about $600, about 6% back. Um, and then I've been grinding out the rest of it to where I am about a percent down now. But I chilled out. I took two losses today. I took two wins yesterday. Um, the wins are bigger than the losses, so I'm just going to chill. Um, well, that's a good thing. I'm not trading tomorrow unless I find a nice setup that I like. But um, I'm going to officially get rid of all this, um, which it wasn't there before I started this video. I've been charting on my own trading view just because I have the subscriptions and my battery's going dead. I better finish this. Okay, so um, today's trade, I should have just stayed out of the market anyway. It's one of those situations where, you know, you build tools or you build a product or something and then you don't even use it, and I should have today. Um, I built this tool that I can scrub all the news, basically, and then I can ask questions on it. And I even asked, is it going to be, you know, more hawkish? And it straight up told me, like, you know, dollar's probably going to... Bishop GPT. Is he going to be more hawkish based on the provided content? It is expected that Fed Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell will maintain a somewhat hawkish tone 
in his upcoming speech. However, he is also likely to emphasize the importance of remaining vigilant in the fight against inflation and may express caution in light of treasury yields. Ultimately, the exact stance Powell will take cannot be determined with certainty until after his speech. You made this, Matt? I, I remember in your application video, you mentioning that you have built a few tools to help you with your trading. Um, but you've made like an AI bishop gpt you could wow that's blowing my mind right now that is very cool that is very very cool i almost want to get uh nick's reaction to that this is matt bishop mm -hmm. and this is bishop gpt this is a ai trading thing that he's built that runs through like a news that he's set it to run through and he asked the question is he going to be more hawkish referring to jerome powell i suppose and then his bishop gpt gave him this response based on the provided context it is expected that fed chair jerome powell will remain somewhat hawkish uh tone in his upcoming speech he he built this to help him he can ask it questions and it will search through, you know, whatever and come up with a response to help him with his trading. Whoa. That is really cool. Isn't like, that crazy? How the heck is it? I don't know. Bishop wonder, GPT. Something tells me that is got to be going to grab like some human written article. It might. If but... it's not, then I need that guy's phone number. <laughs> it, that's really cool. Um, and the fact that it's called Bishop GPT, I also think is very funny. Um, that is so cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Bishop GPT. Yeah. Maybe that's what we're all going to be using pretty soon. Yeah, pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Wait, so you said, did he actually build it or did he, like, did he code something? I, I guess think he coded something. I think he coded something. That's here. Cool. Here, I can... Um, I built this tool that I can scrub all the news basically and then I can ask questions on it. And I even asked, is it going to be, you know, more hawkish? And it straight up told me, like, you know, dollar's probably going to, you know. Wow. So, yeah, so it it's an AI bot that will scrub news sources so that he doesn't have to look for them. He can just ask the question, not have to go read the answer for himself. And then I guess in a few seconds, it'll pop up with something that. Maybe it wrote itself. Maybe it's just pulled from a news article. Yeah. But regardless, even if it's doing it's like pretty a cool. search for articles for you, that's still really cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Straight, tell me that. But it's just telling me it's probably gonna you know, not be something that's gonna be bullish. Um, and sure enough, it. I was in a trade right before news, and it it popped down here, and I watched it pop down. Could have closed it, didn't, and it shot right up within about five or six minutes of that. Um, <laughs> so you learn your lessons. Um, and lesson being, if you build something and spend a bunch of time on it, try to use it maybe, <laughs> trust it a little bit. Uh, Definitely use that. You but can sell that. Other than that, that's my what update for now. I'm gonna try to get a little bit more interactive with my chart this uh, coming week. I apologize for not being as organized as I was this last uh, week, but lots of stuff in the family uh, or the personal life, I guess I should say, that happened. But all good stuff. But busy, busy day. Or busy, busy week. But signing out. <laughs> All right. And just like that, he's gone. Um, that was that was really, really cool. Uh, that that AI tool that you built, I mean, that's that's fascinating. Really cool stuff. All right. So, yeah, really, really cool stuff there from Matt. All right. Next up, we have our good friend Usi with a video. This is, again, another update from the very end of the week last week. But Usi has two videos for us. So he does have a video that he also submitted today from uh, the last week of the competition. So we'll get to see his thoughts at the end of last week. We're gonna get to see his thoughts this week as well. Um, and then I think that we're actually gonna bring Nick in uh, to react to a couple of these as well. So maybe we'll have him react to Usi's second um, and then another video after that or something like that. But let's go ahead and see what Usi was doing to round out last week. Hey everyone, um, this is Usi and I just want to give you guys a very quick and short update. 
it hasn't been a really good week for me um i'm not gonna lie i didn't really get much trades in and all those kinds of stuff but um from the previous update i think i had gold on as in like i had a gold sell that was running um that trade hit a stop loss and i'm gonna show you guys what i'm talking about now and i also picked up a euro a, a usd jpy um uh what was it it was a buy it was a euro jpy buy and um i also um you know i recorded a video update on that talking about what actually happened in the trade so i will then that update will also follow on this video oh and also um the video so the, there's a video that i already recorded for the usd jpy trade and um i will just show you guys that video i recorded it early yesterday um today is the 25th of october i recorded it yesterday on the 24th when I was closing the trade. So um, oh, I'll just so wait a minute. show the clip right now. Oh, so this isn't from last week. This is from yesterday. And then he submitted another one today. Okay, so then he, he made videos in back-to-back -to -back days. Uh, I was a little confused. And then after showing that clip, um, I'll go ahead and talk about what happened in the gold trade and what I'm looking for this week. Hey guys, so this uh, is this week so as well. Here's the trade. Um, I'm actually about to close it now because um, there's a lot of structures that broke as far as my analysis is concerned because I was looking at, um, let me just draw a horizontal line here. I was looking at this, this structure right here, which it was consolidating on for a long time and as you guys can see that it just broke below this structure that i'm talking about um and um with that break below i don't think it's going back up or rather going back to the direction in which i wanted to go which is obviously um to the polish side so he entered right here and this is one thing that i have tremendous respect for when it comes to very disciplined traders and that is not closing out your trade too early leaving your stop with room for the trade to run because you can see he bought here and initially it started to go in his favor um and then dropped drastically but that's okay we hold on to it and it starts to go back up back down back up and then he's in a nice profit here he's in like at the very top of this uh this this candle right here um that would probably be a pretty decent profit probably over a hundred dollars and it, on that same candle it just absolutely gets destroyed right it comes down very close to hitting his um stop loss there and if I were him and I saw that, I probably would have been out of the trade so fast. Even if I had stuck with it, after seeing this drop and then the following moves just continue to go lower and lower, I personally probably would have lost all hope on this trade and closed it out, you know, way too soon, which is not what he did. He held on to it and it continued to move higher. And I totally see what he's saying here with this line here, this structure, you know, you can see the bottom of these candles and these wicks here, clearly marking this uh, this level of importance. And this candle has broken clean through that level. I agree, most likely probably not gonna reverse and then, you know, break through these highs that it still hasn't broken through um, in a little while. You can see these, top. if I could draw a line, you would see the tops of all of these candles touching right here hasn't broken through that most likely not going to um but doesn't matter because he's still in profit because he had good discipline and held on to his trade so um mad respect to, to usi for that because i i personally am, am way too quick to close out of trades when i when i see him losing um i get nervous so i can't I, I can't do it but other better traders than myself can so uh, so 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 I think I'll be I'll have to take my I'll have to close my 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 trade here and just 
yeah just call it a day i entered this trade right over here literally um so it's been consolidating for many days and that's actually one of the reasons why i'm thinking of closing it right now so let me just close it on camera and there we go very nice yes, close position so yeah good okay, trade guys so this is the chart um this is gold i had to go back to recording on the phone because my pc is having troubles and problems when it comes to screen recording i'm not quite sure why but um anyways so this is the gold trade right um i got out exactly at this candle um if you guys remember it was floating around this point on our previous update and exactly um on the 18th of october it you know shot up like this and took me out so i'm completely out on gold and um yeah that's the only update i have right now um so 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 regarding other pairs i'm looking for i'll see if i'll be entering other positions and other trades um but um for now i think that is just it for the week um if i do find an entry on any trade i probably will take it but i don't want to um, risk the account for the sake of making money and all that so yeah okay very cool all right we said last week that we were going to bring nick in to watch a couple of the videos so i have a few for him to react to here uh starting off with usi's final video so let's jump right into it hey guys it's usi here this is going to be my final video update like this is the final one like, it's a very bittersweet moment for me <laughs> i really enjoy this competition it was one of the highlights i think of this year for me um i really enjoyed every bit of it everything about it um but before i talk about that let's just talk about the trade that i have on which is really a quick trade I think it's going to close today, if not tomorrow, um, yeah, but otherwise it's currently on the 20th, this is the 26th of October, the time right now is 5 p.m. South African Standard Time, so let me just show you the trade. This is the trade that you currently have running, it's a Euro USD buy, I mean sell. Um, it's a euro usd sell um so 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 just the thought process quick thought process behind this trade is um euro usd as we had spoken about it the last time we spoke about it we said that it had made a a a, a you know a lower high on this point as you can see this is my entry got out at this candle um and it had made another well, it made a higher high at this point, actually. But in any case, we don't really worry about that. Um, the point is, it broke below this trend that it was doing right here. If I can draw a trend line real quick. There's a trend that it was really creating here. And today, it broke right through it. It even came back up to retest the break, as you can see from this level right here. Um, it came to retest and continued to drop and i entered um just a few minutes ago actually exactly on this candle which is the drop right here oh and also all right so first reaction i like the way he broke that down in terms of uh waiting for rejection a lot of times like traders will jump right into a trade the second they see it you notice like the candle popped hit her level resistance like came back down into play and then he took his trade so I thought that was awesome. And the also like just the observation of like market structure, the trend line he's got drawn, I think it was pretty well uh, written out. So well, I guess we'll see how it plays out for him in the end. It's playing out pretty well right now. He's, oh, he's, so this is he's adjusted okay. his, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it is. So he's adjusted his take profit, it looks like. I think just before he had his stop at minus 300 and his take profit at like, plus 300 oh this is interesting though because look he's got his he's now taking his stop loss at this point he's taking a 
basically taking a profit at a hundred bucks, mm -hmm. but still risking three hundred, which is interesting. He, yeah, I think so. If we actually go back just a second, I think that he just moved his. So yeah, so he had his take profit at three fifty one, and he was mm -hmm. twenty two dollars in profit here. And then just a little bit later, so a little bit of time has gone by, and in fact, we can see. 15 18 so it was like it was like 10 minutes yeah in like 10 minutes that's shot way way down he's almost in a hundred dollars of profit and it looks like he's getting ready to maybe just close it out it seems like interesting and just and just take his profit mm -hmm. um but this is this is also from today you can see yeah it's really recent. uh that it's it's thursday i think he said it was thursday the what that's the 26th yeah so i think that this is from uh this morning for us mm. So he knows that the trading competition is coming to a close, and he just got one last trade in. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. My my take profit, because I want the trade to hit my take profit on camera. You know, just to, just as a cherry on top, <laughs> and um, just you know to just conclude my trading for the competition. So let us hope that that is actually going to happen. And there we go, guys. Um, yeah, my take profit is officially hit. And my account is currently up um, $711. That's going to be my final balance of the day. And yeah, thank you so much, guys. I just so he's up, he ended up like seven percent, which is pretty good. That's, yeah, that's uh, honestly for the three weeks, seven percent is incredible. Uh, so well done to Usi. Let's just see what he has to say. I want to say to everyone that's watching the audience that thank you so much for the support that you guys have been giving us in this competition. You know, these videos are long and all that. And you've just been here, you know, watching us and watching us trade. I just want to appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart. Um, I appreciate, um, obviously, my 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 fellow friends. They're actually friends at this point because we've built some sort of a community around this competition with the contestants. Um, I just want to thank all of them for all that they've done, you know, their efforts to join this competition um you know and for me to be part of it is really something amazing to me i can't really express my gratitude enough i want to thank the a1 trading team as well as you know frank and nick for making this possible i really think that this wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for them so my my greatest gratitude goes to them um, and just everyone else that worked on this, um, the, 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 the formation of the competition. I also need to, you know, give my, my great gratitude to, to, to James. Um, you guys don't understand the level and the intensity at which he was working to ensure the success of this competition. And you he gave you the shout out. Yeah, I I, I, I paid Usi to say yeah, that. Yeah, you gotta you gotta send them over the <laughs> check after this. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just That's so successful. so. Uh, I don't know how it happened, but we somehow found like the best group of people. Yeah, right are, off the yeah. rip, like when it came to the the trading competition, we got such an amazing group. Like I've said it in every update video, um, you know, and and I've. I, when I was on the call with with them yesterday too, I, I was telling it to them directly. Like they've all been great. I said it at the beginning of this video. Everybody has been great. It, it really has been very very fun to do, and um, I is as grateful as uh, Usi is. I am equally as grateful that they have been um, such a, a pleasure to work with. So yeah, it's, it's been fun. It's been awesome to watch. Just see everybody doing their thing and. You know, it's it's a, for a lot of people, this is a passion that they're working on making into a real thing. So it's just cool to see people, you know, being constructive and making progress. So, cool. Competition and just make it what it is today. You know, so, yeah, I thank him very much. Um, thank you, James. Thank you, James. <laughs> yeah, so, um, um, yeah, but uh, otherwise, 
I'm, I, I hope that you know this is going to be the first of many and um, I really can't wait to see what the A1 team in, in, in general has in store for us next. All right, so that is our final update from Usi. Usi, thank you very much. We have one more that we're going to have Nick react to, and that is I've got a quick one here from Adam. All right. So let's, let's see, what, see Adam's got. what Adam has been up to. And this is the uh, gold trade on the weekly time frame. And of course, I have my levels already drawn up here. And I have my daily resistance drawn up here. So on the weekly, I can see that price was breaking down, lower highs, lower lows, all throughout June, July, August, and into September. But our trend line was broken and we moved to the upside. However, I did see price sort of rejecting on new areas so i had a closer look to come down to the daily time frame so that price rejected here rejected here and i was anticipating that price would do the exact same thing at this particular area here so just to highlight it for everyone so we have this area here this area here and this area here all respecting the daily time frame. But of course, I don't take trades on this particular time frame. So I'm going to come down to four hour. And this is where I always draw my fib levels. So price came up to my fib levels, the four hour time frame. And I had a bullish reaction from that fib level. So I like to come down to the one hour and take my trades from there most times. So I'm currently in profit for this particular trade. I'm hoping that by the end of the challenge, I've in, I'll be in decent profit. So that's my first trade and the second trade. So one thing that I'm gonna say about Adam um, is uh, something that I've noticed him do in all of his update videos to this point is he always does the same thing. He starts on the weekly, mm -hmm. he goes to the daily, he goes to the four hour and then he enters on the one hour, mm. which I think is is uh, kind of an interesting strategy. It's something that I haven't seen anybody else in the trading competition do. Yeah. Um, at least like back it all the way up to the weekly. And if they have, uh, they don't do it every time. Not like Adam. E right. Ad Ad Adam, every time when he starts his explanation, it's weekly, daily, four hour one hour which i think is is cool to see because he's very technical with it. he's getting as much information um as as possible and then entering on those smaller time frames to mm. get a more exact entry but he's looking at the overall picture with that weekly and those with those weekly and daily charts before getting a little bit more technical with it so that's just something that uh, i wanted to point out i like that and i also want to say his charts look really cool <laughs> yeah he's got cool colors like i like the soft blue it's almost like edge finder colors almost uh -huh. but also yes i like the way you, i noticed that too it went weekly all the way down to the one hour mm -hmm. multi time frame analysis what they call that it's really cool because it, it allows you to kind of get the bigger picture as like a directional thing mm -hmm. and then actually like kind of pinpoint entries and exits and right. stop loss placement because you can see his stop loss is like very particularly placed, which I which I like. So that's cool. It's funny that you you say that you like his chart because I think it was last week when I was doing this, I was talking about everybody's charts because most people did take the time to customize their charts exactly how they wanted because they you know they were given this account and when his account it's like a fresh account yeah. right his account did not look like this to right. start with he had to go in there and he had to make it look exactly you know how he likes it to look which i think is a fun way that traders actually get to like in a unique way get to kind of show off their personality a little bit yeah it's um, very true. with with custom charts so i don't know I, I always think it's fun getting to see what other people's charts look like yeah that's awesome cool is the uh nas 100 so again, coming back to the... So Adam was the one who was on the other side of my NAS trade because I've been getting smoked being long <laughs> on the NASDAQ. This is the guy who was shorting it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just thought that was funny. Uh, weekly time frame to see how price is moving. Again, another downtrend. 
So if I was to draw a trend line from this high, lower high here, so that price reacted at that weekly time frame here. And price also respected this point here. And again here. But this is just to get the direction of where price is going. So you come down on the daily time frame, see things a bit more clearly to your trend line. Price is in a downtrend, come down here. For our time frame, this is where I would pay closer attention to support and resistance areas. And of course, drawing my FIB levels from the last high to the low from Monday, 23rd of October. Price came and respected my FIBs. And again, wanting to see what price does at this area came down on the one hour. On this particular candle, for me, this is my entry signal. So this particular bearish candle right here. And at the moment, currently in profit. And again, hoping to have a much more decent profit at the end of the, uh, the challenge. So that's the two trades that I'm in for, for now anyway. I think I think I, <laughs> I think I once said that Adam's charts look like a modern piece of art. It does. It's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of abstract looking. You got a yeah. lot of colors in here. You've got you know some some straight lines, some curved lines. It's I like, like it. it's like a modern piece of art. It's but, cool. uh, also, I just happen to know those trades hit for him profit for me. I got stopped, <laughs> but yeah, that, that is, uh, I can already tell you with hindsight in my favorite, that's a gorgeous trade right there. So congrats, Adam. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Nick, for hopping in and checking out a few more of, uh, of these guys, uh, update videos. We definitely have more to get to. So I think we're going to check out Josh next, but I know Nick has lots of other things that he needs to get to. So thank you for, for checking out a few of the update videos with us. No problem. It was it was fun. All right, we are back. It is me and I am lowering my seat a little bit. I think it's funny because um, I, I'm a very tall individual. So I lower all of my seats down to the floor. And so anytime anybody else uses this room or this chair for anything, it always gets raised up. Um, that is not a knock on Nick by any means. Nick is actually fairly tall. He's Nick is like Nick is Nick is fairly tall. I'm just enormously tall. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, let's see. So we have our our, our next update is going to be from Josh, and Josh has titled it "Last Video Sad Face." It is sad. It's sad that it's it's our it's our last video with Josh. Um, I'm curious what shirt Josh is wearing today. Let's find out. Hi right, everyone. So it's Tuesday. He's gone with the Thursday, white one today. The day before um, the last day. So tomorrow is Wednesday and that's the last day. Um, I believe the end of the competition is just whenever James looks at our accounts. So this probably is my last trading day today. And we're about to wrap up the, the day and I'm about to head off. So I thought I'd just share with you. Uh, my trade that I took this I took this trade on Monday and it's probably the last trade that I am going to take and it was a nice move that we're able to catch and yeah we looked in a nice profit and I'm happy um, so I'll quickly share the trade and I'll just talk to you guys about a few things all right so this is trade as you can see area of support strong area of support and we had this wick up here which we'd retested and we had this move to the downside uh, so i bought from this area and i pretty much held uh, well no i didn't pretty much held i did hold the whole way up uh, we did like run into around this area a little bit of a pullback that almost came back to our entry however we ultimately saw price making moves to the outside what in the world so <laughs> entered a buy on this candle and closed it on this candle looks like a great trade. It is a great trade. It is a great trade. Um, I'm sure that you got really nice profit off that trade, 
but then it comes all the way back down may lower probably than where you entered it which can be very very scary you know but then oh my god that move what time frame are we looking at is this the 15 minute or is this like the hourly if this is an hourly time frame what yeah so we're able to look in a oh, great i'm sorry what the what are we looking at here nice profit and i'm happy um so i'll quickly show the trade and i'll just talk to you guys about a few things all right so this is trade as you okay 15 minute See. chart on the euro 15 minute chart on the euro just absolutely spiked so he could have made a few thousand in profit i at least a thousand at least 1500 in profit off that trade i think and still i don't I, I don't i'm not knocking his trade at all he clearly had a very successful trade he bought down there it, it rose he closed it nothing wrong with that at all i just think it's crazy how much higher this thing went right after he closed it but retested and we had still to move to the downside uh, so i bought from this area and i pretty much held uh, well no i didn't pretty much out i did hold the whole way up uh, we did like run into around this area a little bit of a pullback that almost came back to our entry however we ultimately saw price make a move to the outside and yeah so we're able to look in a great profit on that and personally i know this may not go down well but this is why i don't use um trailing stops or things like that because I, my personal approach is that when i analyze the market I mark out an area where I think price is going to hit and an area where I think price is going to stop or like where I'm wrong, sorry. And it's either going to hit my stop loss or hit my take profit. There is it like, it's either going to do one of them two things. When I analyze it at the start, that's where I thought it was going to go. So that's, per, that's my personal opinion. Obviously there's nothing wrong with trailing stops. I've tried it before, but it, it just wasn't for me. And I mean, that's one great thing about trading the markets is that there's so many different ways that you can trade and still be profitable. Mm -hmm. Profitable, yeah. So, personally, it's just not for me. But, yeah, and as we see on this trade, it played out nicely. We're able to lock in a uh, 1 to 3.12 uh, R trade, which locked us in $377.02. So, that's it, basically. So, that was a $377 trade. That was 377 from there to there. So that, you know, by the time you get to here, that's over a thousand. Probably. Here, at least, over a thousand. And then even higher. Yeah, I mean I don't <laughs> I don't mean to make it sound like I'm like I'm not gonna trade at all. I just I really think it's just so crazy how much higher that thing went uh very shortly after. Um but still, three hundred and seventy-seven dollars is a great trade. Great trade. Competition is over now. Um, I finished just over twenty-three percent in profit, which is insane, especially in like three weeks. So yeah, in three three weeks, I was able to lock in twenty-three percent, which is I don't understand how I've done it. My results was never <laughs> like on my. Because you're a good account, trader, account Josh. I trade. I'm nowhere near this good. So how this has happened, I guess it's just the right market timing, but just because I've done this now, I'm telling you it's not sustainable. You cannot do this continually, and I'm not about to switch up my strategies trade like this because it, it will uh, end horribly wrong in the long run. But yeah, even if you minus the NFP trade that we had, which put us in 14% profit, we're still, if you minus that trade, we're still like nine percent up which is great like in th in three weeks that's fantastic if i <laughs> if i made three percent in a month i'd be happy but yeah um so overall i'm happy with this competition i'm happy with the way it ended um happy with the progress throughout this competition and like trusting my strategy that i was using and sticking to plan and honestly it's been such great fun uh, i do thank the a1 team especially james for sorting this all out and just this whole competition i i hope to see some more people uh, attempt and maybe one day they'll like, be like a veterans challenge but yeah it's been great fun and
think that's like, a good idea. Just having a <laughs> like trading like this, and like it not being serious or that serious because it is um just. You're not taking me serious, Josh. That my account is quite fun and quite a relief, but also it's still stressful because any loss that we take is published online for people to see and critique and things like that. So I, I've said that before. The fact that these guys who have most likely, I think Joseph has in the past, uh, maybe MJ as well. I'm trying to remember uh, everybody, but for the majority of the people competing in this competition, they have never done anything like this. They have never, you know, they have all traded, obviously, but they have never traded publicly, which means that they're going to have to show losses. There wasn't anybody who had nothing but perfect trades, you know. Uh, everybody had losers, which means that everybody then has to show all the people watching Here's where I messed up. Here's where I was wrong, which is a hard thing to do. But everybody did it uh, in in, in a, uh, a a very uh, very good way. I'll, I'll say, it. like everybody everybody did a great job with it. Clearly, so. I mean, a big well done to everyone else who uh, was in who took partook in the competition. I think we've done well, all of us. So, yeah, I believe that tomorrow we have a call. Um, so that would be the last time you'll see me, but yeah, it's been great fun, and I thank James and the A1 team for hosting like this, and um, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video series, but yeah, that's uh, me over and out for now. All right, thank you, Josh. Thank you for that update. Next up, it is MJ, MJ's final update video. What's up, A1 Trading Show fans? Here's your boy, MJ, representing Team Philippines. And today I'm going to show you the trades that I took and updates on my current trades this week. So stay tuned. All right, so the first entry that I wanted to show you is GBP USD or the pound dollar. As you can see in the, in the edge finder, it has a very bearish signal. And I wanted to show you where I entered. So looking at the four-hour chart... Uh, right here uh, in this area, we did see a uh, this big red candle over here. Um, I thought that it may break this area of support. This area of support. So my idea was if it does break that area of support, I'm going to look for an entry on the 15-minute time frame. So... I went to the 15 minute time frame. And if I go there, I marked those levels already. And you will see here that I entered my trade. This was the level that I was looking to break right here. And when this candle came down and it broke and close that level at the end of it i took the sell entry uh, for a really neat 1.5 risk to reward ratio and i took profits right down below here all right for my next pair that was that like I traded a, this week that was like one of the cleanest trades of the competition i mean that thing just went straight down there was no retesting no waiting no nothing that was Pretty much just red candle after red candle after red candle all the way down. Very nice. Is coming from gold. Same thing with this one. <laughs> what in the world? So he's looking at the five minute chart. So there's obviously going to be a lot more closing candles. Um, you know, if you were to do an, an hourly chart, this pretty much would be like a full hour or so. Um, so it would be like one big green candle. But. Uh, Still, I mean, look at that. Just clean, straight up, and then got out at a nice spot too. Yeah, it went a little bit higher, but that's fine. Uh, because not long after that, I mean, again, these are only five-minute candles. So not that long after that, price started coming back down and coming down quickly. So 
again, really another really good looking trade right here. If I look at the five minute chart, this is basically my basis when to enter and when not to. <laughs> right here, I see a consolidation in the five minute chart. And what I did was I waited for this price to break this area of resistance. And at the end and close of it, I took a buy trade. Um, and I took profits, about 82 pips from it. Um, it's a 1 is to 1.6 risk to reward ratio. Um, and then I got out of the trade. Uh, so very, very simple. And the reason why I took this trade, uh, I once again based it on the Edge Finder Pro. But um, usually I took, I only look at the bearish, very bearish signal. Um, but at this time, I see gold already has a, a plus three score on the edge finder. Um, so I saw the setup over there. I saw my rules manifesting on that uh, market. So I took the trade. All right. On my next trade that I actually just took today is coming from AUD USD. Um, again, my bias here is bearish basically because the top setups on the edge finder is what it says. Um, I understand the fundamentals of it, so I agree and concur with the edge finder results. And if I look at the one hour chart, I do I did see that there was a downtrend forming. And when I saw that this price broke the level of support that I marked up, I anticipated that if it does, just in case it does, we test back to that support level, then I can hop in on a trade. So if I move down to the 15 minute chart, uh, you would see on the arrows right here, that is when I entered my short position. Um, and right here, um, and my stops was just right above this previous high um, and I took profits right here. Just a one is to one risk to reward ratio. So um, that's it for me. Um, I took, that's a total of three trades. I do wanna thank you everybody for supporting this competition and to my fellow trade mates, uh, my co-competitors in this competition, you guys are the best. I wanna give you guys a huge shout out and to the A1 Trading Company, I appreciate and I'm really, really happy to be part of this competition. I wish you all the best and more power to everybody. See ya. Like I said, man, everybody in this competition, so nice, such great people. All right, this brings us to our very last video of the competition. It is Joseph and I feel like, I feel like I've closed out like every episode with Joseph for some reason. And I did not do that intentionally. And that may not even be true. But for some reason, I feel like it is. Anyway, Joseph has got a really crazy looking chart set up right here. I don't know what in the world this is, but it looks fun. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's finish out the trading competition here with one more update video from Joseph. Hello guys. First of all things, I just would like to say thanks for this opportunity, this competition was really fun was a great time that i had um james thank you for opening your schedule and this project in this competition was really really nice um i want to do a recap of all of my trades that i did sadly i didn't pay attention with our last day and i believe that i'm gonna be in last place to be honest <laughs> anyways, there is no last going. place there is no um, last place a recap of the trades down here you can see the account history with the profits but i will pass through through the graphics i guess it's more easy for you james true to see um our trades and helping your reaction <laughs> so in the aussie dollar i had a first first trade here uh, with this trend blue line that shows how the trade goes. So just for information fact. Are you about to go through every trade that you took? <laughs> Is that what? I thought you were showing us the account history 
and all the profits and losses, but are you about to break down every single trade? No, I'm just kidding. The blue one. I mean, I'm not kidding. For, I think that's what he's doing, sorry, but for positive. Uh, clearly, he does it and fairly the red one that quickly. You're see so will be for loss trades. So I took a trade in Aussie dollar. One that was positive. This one was about seven twenty-three dollars. Seven hundred twenty-three was good. And this one was just 14, no, this one was 51. So two uh, wins um, going one on one, one. Then that's it. For the last dollar was just these two ones. Then for euro dollar, I had, oh, I was all set up here. Let me just pull back for the October since the beginning, euro dollar. I had just one trade, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pulling up here, was this one. Wasn't bad, but was a day with a lot of decisions, it was in a Thursday. And I just got in on a good term that I went out when I saw that the market was consolidating at this area right here, for what I remember. Then I said, All right, now nah, it's too volatile and I, I don't trust it, so I get out good because I was gonna be in loss probably because of the break even when I put it. Um, and for the pound, that is the traumatic, the disaster, the war <laughs> disaster in my trading. Um, let me change here. So let me find it. it. Will not be hard because it will be a huge, huge bad trade. Um, yeah. I started with a break even, like I said before in my videos. This is to be. I kind of like the way that he has. This is a break even trade. I kind of like the way that he has these these trades uh, uh, broken down, where you can see his entry and then you can see his close, so you can actually kind of get an idea of like how profitable the trade was you know this one's a little flat that one's a little bit steeper that's kind of cool I, I haven't seen that before this was this 14 17 ones that you can see down here uh, so is this true then i had a better one here but i saw that the market was truly consolidated again and we were expecting huge news so I said, no, nah, it's not good. I have to get out of this place and good that I did. <laughs> um, then <clears throat> being stubborn, I saw that the market was like the same price here. I said, I'll try to buy again. And then I did. That was bad. <laughs> it was really bad. So I put my, my, um, it was almost from, really good. Uh, my buy position here. Almost. I was expecting this to go further they did 123 500 if i'm not mistaken um yeah around this area here for this next blue horizontal line mm. but it went a little bit on my favor but suddenly the mark came back and i was just holding and holding but even the pattern is here it's not in my favor like the top and bottles <laughs> you see so it went and I just get out here with bad really really bad i guess it was 1000 let me show you. Um, where is it? What's this one? One thousand hundred thirty. Then <laughs> for my my trade account. So it happens. Bad and now it's in this area. I don't know what's gonna happen now. Maybe it will be a consolidation for a pullback. But it is this that happened. Also in oil, I took a nice loss. I took a nice loss here. But this um, this nice loss <laughs> was like this trade. It took. Uh, I guess I lived there for half of the month since 16 to yesterday probably um it went good it wasn't bad but the patterns uh start to go not at my, at my favor and then i get out um, as you can see here we had some good top and bottoms then started to lose straight. yeah if this so again what i was talking about you can kind of gauge how good or bad of a trade it was by how steep or straight the line is this line doesn't look that steep right like if that's where he entered and that's where he closed relatively speaking more on the flat side 348 loss 
So how much would the profit have been if our line looked like that? I can only imagine. 348 for that? That's got to be like, you know, close to two grand? I don't know. Um, I may have run away with those profits, you know, but. And then this happens. <laughs> See, when the patterns change, like, obviously the market will uh, change direction and this is what happens, but it's okay. Um, yeah, I took this loss. That's another reason why I personally think that I, I, I personally can't imagine not trailing stops. Um, Josh, perfect example of somebody who doesn't trail stops and is clearly very successful without it. Totally optional. I personally can't imagine not trailing stops because I, once price is getting up to this range, I'm putting my stop loss like right here, you know, right below it, locking in max profit, um, strong structure of potentially support or resistance here you know i don't know it's just oil me. that one the big one in the pound dollar i had good ones to an euro that was 400 each that this one and this one this one here and also this one here this was a good one I left in a good place because then consolidated and the market just went down. So that one was my, let's say the best one that I did so far. And it was like a couple hours. Um, yes, that that is the the deal. I guess I'll be in last place, but that's fine. The, I enjoy it a lot. Um, the fun fact no is that place. it's way different than be in a real account. Like my demo account, I had to think like psychologically different. Then my real account, my trades in real account is a whole different story. Uh, I use this platform, this crazy platform that you see right now, but it's really stable and good for me, so it works. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for the competition, and I hope to be uh, applying for the next ones and get better <laughs> results. Have everyone your results work, were great. A good prosper Joseph. profit trades in the future. Thank you so much. If if you are complaining about your results, you finished in profit technically, ten dollars and forty cents in profit. Well, maybe not so much. You didn't show us what active trade you have here. That's in a five hundred and fifty-six dollar drawdown. But if it weren't for that guy there, you had you had really 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 good profit so do not uh be be down on yourself joseph you did very well one bad one bad trade one bad mistake is all it takes to you know bring your account balance down sure but before that 1100 you lost 1100 dollars and still were in profit okay just think about that that's what you need to focus on so this is it. We've reached the end of the competition. It has been such a fun experience getting to work with all of these people, all of these uh, amazing members of the A1 trading community from all over the world. Um, it really has been, uh, like I said, just such a cool experience getting to work with these guys. And Don't forget to check out the links in the description if you want our broker recommendation, access to our free Discord, free Edge Finder, or want to chat with us on Telegram. Remember, you can watch us live in the markets every morning starting at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and we have lots more free trading tools and content available on our website, a1trading.com. Thanks for watching.